Welcome to the Door County Reads 2022 Festival. I'm Jared Santek, Artistic Director at Right on Door County. We are a proud partner of Door County Reads and very happy to have you with us this evening for this panel discussion on supporting Wisconsin writers. We have great people doing great work to nurture writers in our state, and I'm very grateful to have their participation. I know that everyone has uh, Zoom fatigue these days, but this evening with the snow coming from the West and us being scattered all across the state, I'm really, really grateful for Zoom and grateful for Door County Reads to putting this program together. A few announcements before we begin. Right On acknowledges the First Nations people who are the original inhabitants of our region, particularly the Potawatomi, Winnebago Ho-Chunk, Ojibwe, Nokwe, Sauk, Menominee, and Ottawa people. We acknowledge this space as their land and home. I want to thank the funders and partners who have made this program possible, especially the Door County Library Foundation and the Friends of Door County Library. This program may touch on varying points of view, we thank you for being open to hearing others' opinions and participating in intellectual freedom in a respectful manner. We have a lot of information to share with you this evening. So in the interest of time, I'm going to identify each of our panelists in the organization they represent. Each of them will then provide an overview of their organization. Um, so we, we are very grateful to have with us tonight in the order in which they'll present Eric Rasmussen, board member and literary magazine editor of Chippewa Valley Writers Guild, Vicki Smith, board member, Lake Superior Writers Guild, Deb Bushman, regional advisor, Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, Wisconsin chapter, Christina Kubasta, Vice President, Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets. Barry Whiteman, President, Wisconsin Writers Association. And Jenny Grupp, Executive Director, Woodland Pattern. And myself, Artistic Director at Right on Door County. So Eric, let's start with you and hear about your organization. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, thanks for running this event. These are super cool and, and just gathering from all the way across the state. So um, yeah, like Jared said, my name is Eric Rasmussen and I'm here this evening representing the Chippewa Valley Writers Guild. And uh, Chippewa Valley is uh, the Western outpost of the state. So Eau Claire, Chippewa Falls, Menominee and uh, all points surrounding there. And uh, yeah, I'll start with a little history of the organization. So in 2016, uh, a guy by the name of B.J. Hollers, who is a uh, fantastic nonfiction writer and uh, uh, professor at University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, um, kind of looked around the writing community of Eau Claire and the Chippewa Valley and saw that uh, it was strong and passionate and uh, mainly click-based and no one talked to each other. And he thought it would be a great idea to, uh, you know, uh, form an organization, something that could uh, you know, serve as a go-between uh, with the, the area's writers. So he uh, set out to create the Chippewa Valley Writers Guild. And um, over the intervening seven years, it's been a fascinating process of experimentation and discovery and kind of learning what um, writers of all different uh, experience levels uh, are interested in and what they need. And um, yeah, and so we, we started off with the idea of, of putting on craft talks, and that was one of the main focuses that we were going to help uh, local writers learn about the craft, and, and we uh, welcomed all sorts of uh, folks from all over the state um, to come in and talk about issues, and, and those were okay. Those were not especially well intended, uh, and at the same time, we uh, started with a uh, summer retreat, uh, kind of a, a writing residency at a cabin outside of Fall Creek called Saranica. And that was a little more popular. Um, and since then, we've just kind of refined and turned all of those ideas into, uh, you know, opportunities for, again, even more connection and learning and all that. So um, 
uh, our kind of our slate currently involves a lot of, we still do craft talks lately. It's, they've been all zoom based, which has uh, been tough, but also allowed us to welcome some, you know, writers from a little bit more of a national spread uh, through the wonders of the internet. Um, We've hosted a lot more readings. Uh, BJ tonight, he's the one who should probably be talking. Um, but he is emceeing one of our events at the Pablo Center here in Eau Claire. It's our brand new giant fancy arts building. Um, we have a collaboration with uh, some local writers and musicians um, uh, overlooking the river and the snow. I'm sure it's beautiful. You can all imagine. Uh, but uh, So that's the, our Sound and Stories series. And then uh, just recently we... Um, sent out uh, or will be sending out acceptances to our new summer program. Uh, it's called the Priory and uh, the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire purchased an old uh, Priory, which was active up until just a handful of years ago, housing, um, you know, sisters of a, an order that escapes me at the moment. Uh, but anyway, they transformed it into a retreat center. And uh, this summer we're going to host uh, 50 some writers for a long weekend with some professionals and workshops and writing time and all that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, I think, and I, you know, I, I kind of speak for BJ a little bit when I say this, cause he's the, he's the man in charge. Um, but the, what's maybe been more valuable than any, you know, individual event has been, um, the networking and the connection and, uh, you know, inspiring people. So, uh, BJ is a good friend of mine. And when he started this about a year into it, um, I got a little jealous. It looked like a ton of fun. So I was like, how can I help? Like, how can I get involved? So uh, we brainstormed the idea of a local literary journal. We called it Barstow and Grand. And um, that has also evolved. We're going on to our sixth issue this year. And uh, since the inception where we welcomed mostly local writers, uh, now we've expanded to kind of the upper Midwest. And if you'll forgive me, I was kind of creeping on the audience list. And it looks like we've got someone in the audience who we've published, which is super cool. Uh, I, I guess see Kathleen Surly out in the audience there. So welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> um, and, and it doesn't stop there. So other community members have kind of taken the idea and run with it. So we've had folks that have put together a monthly writer's evening where they meet at a local coffee shop. Uh, Katie started that and uh, it's since been picked up by a different group. Um, Jan Carroll, who uh, is a fantastic local poet, uh, she had the idea of a, a series we called Six by Six. So each evening was six authors, six minutes a piece, uh, reading pieces they prepared on a particular theme. And you know, over a couple of years worth of that, we featured a couple hundred local folks, uh, writers of all different ilk. Um, so yeah, so it's it's we're young, like we're still figuring this out. Uh, you know, one of the ideas that Jared asked to maybe uh, reference was fundraising and how one exists in such an environment. And I'll be taking notes on everyone else and what their suggestions are, because we're certainly trying to figure that out ourselves. Um, but yeah, it's been such a cool process and such a great way to form community and connect uh, across the state. You know, we have the honor of uh, working with the Wisconsin Poet Laureate Commission, which has been fantastic, um, hosting writers from all over and, uh, you know, welcoming them digitally and in person, and then, you know, finding folks around town who uh, love writing and want to get better and want to connect with writers. Um, so I'll throw our website on the chat, of course, uh, cvwritersguild.org. That has, of course, the complete list of everything we offer and the full backstory, and I'm sure there's uh, tons that I'm forgetting here. Um, but yeah, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging work. And sometimes when you host a craft talk with someone you've brought in from out of state, and they've driven hours and hours, and you've found money for a hotel, and you've planned the organization, the presentation, and you've advertised, and then four people are sitting in the audience. Those are sometimes the tough moments. And sometimes the moments that, uh, you know, make you wonder, you know, cost benefit analysis. Uh, but then there's the moments too, where this summer, like I said, we'll uh, introduce uh, a welcome couple dozen folks to, you know, our neck of the woods and gather over writing and, and have a great and memorable weekend. So, so yeah, I see a, oh yeah, message in the chat from Kathleen. So yeah, and again, super cool to make that connection too. And uh, yeah, March 1st is when we open for submissions, barstowandgrant.com. Everyone should send us your stuff. Thank <laughs> you.
Great. Thank you so much, Eric. And again, um, for those of you joining us, we will have time at the end of each organization's overview to take your questions and also to have conversation and questions between our panelists. So Vicki, would you like to go next? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. I really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you, right on Door County. Uh, my name is Vicki Smith, and I'm here to represent the Lake Superior Writers, which serves the literary arts community in northeastern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin, uh, although we do occasionally have members from other states. Lake Superior Writers is one of the largest and most active literary organizations in our area. We work to foster writing communities, provide an audience for literature, and further the artistic development of writers through workshops, readings, and publications. And while we really work hard to provide program, all kinds of programming for our members at a discount, we also feel that it's really important to uh, provide some free programming uh, for our community members and for members of Lake Superior Writers and for people who are not members of Lake Superior Writers. And we have been very fortunate uh, to receive a grant, a grant from the Minnesota Arts Board to help us sponsor some of those uh, programs that we've been offering uh, during the pandemic. Um, so we are currently doing a lot of virtual programming um, even though some of the things and the restrictions with the pandemic have eased, we find that we have a lot of members that really aren't that comfortable showing up yet in public spaces. Um, also, for example, like tonight, it's snowy. It was snowing like crazy, blizzard-like conditions over northeastern Minnesota. And so it's convenient. Um, so some of the programmings we, programs we offer uh, the second Wednesday of every month from September through May, because those are the cold months up here usually, we've been hosting Superior Shares, which is a virtual open mic. It's free and open to both our members and members of the public. Um, we started this open mic when the pandemic shut down uh, to give people a place to come and read because they couldn't go to an open, open mic house or a bar or a place and do their reading. Um, we've kept them going because we found an audience that really enjoys showing up virtually, uh, either usually because they live too far to make it convenient for them to drive an hour or two into Superior or Duluth uh, to do an open mic. And this way they have a chance uh, to come and read. And so at the end of my little spiel, I'll put a link in to our Superior Shares because you can be from anywhere and get a Zoom link and come and read if you wish. We also host a virtual cafe on the first Saturday morning of each month. And this is also free and open to the public. Prior to the pandemic, we did this as an in-person thing at a local coffee house. Everybody would gather. And again, you don't have to, there's no fee, there's no membership. Um, people would come and talk about anything about writing ask questions, um, ask advice, uh, tell, talk about what they were working on, anything like that. Um, and so we've been doing this virtually and we picked a format where we have a specific topic each month, which has worked out really nice. And one of the things, because it's virtual, everybody gets a chance to weigh in on the topic instead of being in this noisy coffee house where we couldn't hear everybody and where side conversations got going. So um, for example, uh, the first time we talked about a writing practice, what does it take to get yourself into the practice of writing and how do you keep moving forward? Um, and then our, our March topic is gonna to be about writing advice and feedback, the good, the bad, and the confusing, both how to give somebody writing feedback that is useful and what to do with writing feedback when you get it. And again, I'll put a chat, a link uh, in the chat for that page if anybody who's listening wants to sign up. Um, one of the biggest things that I think we did that um, our writers seem to really enjoy is in the summer of 2021, we started a program called Book Club for Writers. 
And we started this program to connect authors and writers. And what's nice about this, some of them, like Eric, you mentioned, we had one that had five people plus the author. But because it was virtual and there were no expenses involved in, uh, you know, we paid the author from our grant money, but we didn't have to supply a hotel room or travel expenses. It didn't matter. But um, as it grew and word got out, our other book clubs have been um, better attended. And so what we do is we invite an author to come and we do this about every six or eight weeks and they read a bit from their book, whichever book they're going to be talking about. And then what we ask them to focus on is their process in writing that book. Uh, what it was like, what were the ups, what were the downs. Uh, we ask them to talk about their process in, in getting an agent or getting it published and what that process was like. And we, we find that our writers are really interested in that. And then um, they also like to ask questions about the writer's choices, like why did you choose that point of view or why did you, you know, have the characters or why did you do the time sequencing the way you did it and, and all that stuff. So it becomes both about the process and the art form, but also what a lot of writers want to know is how'd you get that published? So um, we have had uh, Linda Lagarde Grover come and talk about her book in the memory of, uh, in the night of memory, Danielle Sozin, who wrote The Long Shining Waters, T. Marie Burtonow, who wrote The Mason House. And our next book club for writers will feature Brian Malloy who wrote The Year of Ice. He's going to be talking about that book because last fall he talked about his other book for one of our presentations after uh, Francesco. And so I will put a link to that. That's coming up in March um, on Tuesday, March 29th from 6.30 to 8. And again, that's a free, um, free event and it's open to members and non-members. So anybody's welcome to attend. Um, and while these events, our Superior Shares Virtual Cafe and Book Club are free, people still need to register to get the Zoom link. In addition to the programs mentioned, we offer a lot of writing classes on a diverse range of topics from world building to flash fiction to uh, mystery writing. And we just like to cover as many bases as we can for our uh, writers. And we also sponsor a yearly writing contest, which is going on right now. It just started and the deadline is April 11. And this year we will also be sponsoring and hosting the Northeastern Minnesota Book Awards for 2022. And information for that can be found on our website too. And I also, um, any other information programming or how to join Lake Superior Writers, can be found on that space too. So thank you. Great. And thank you, lots Becky. Of lots of great things happening there. Christina. I'm, I'm sorry, Deb. <laughs> Deb. I got my alphabet wrong. <laughs> Deb. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I am going to start mine out with a story. First, I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm with the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, and we are a global organization. And I am the regional uh, administrator for Wisconsin for the Wisconsin chapter. So years ago, because I'm a writer, so we always have to tell stories, uh, I decided that I wanted to write picture books. So I went to an SCBWI conference that was right in my backyard. Wasn't very far from my house. I thought this will be great. I had written my picture book because really, how hard can it be? It's a picture book. I walked into the conference with my 2000 word picture book and sat down at a table with someone who was an author who is very well published, a Wisconsin author and other, other writers who were there and we were going to critique each other's work. And I soon found out that 
picture books aren't 2,000 words. Even though I'd read several of them to my sons, they're usually around 500 words. And you don't describe everything in a picture book because there's pictures to do that. I had a lot to learn, a lot to learn. And that conference was an entire weekend. And boy, I got taken down a few pegs, even though I was excited. I thought, I need to learn something. And the best thing about my organization, as well as all these organizations that are here, is you get a chance to be with people who are interested in the same thing you're interested in, who are encouraging, who are there to support you and to help you learn your craft. And that is the greatest thing about being a writer is that someone said yesterday at a Zoom meeting I was at, we, were, we are having currently, because we're a global organization, every year we have a winter and fall conference and everything is Zoom right now. And at the beginning of the conference, someone was telling us that, remember, you are not the only person out there and that as you're writing, you have all of these people supporting you. And it really is wonderful. And it's great to have other people who understand your craft. And we are not brain surgeons because writers get it wrong a lot before they get it right. And that is the great thing about being a writer is that we can just get better. And over the years, uh, SCBWI has been my support and has been the support for a lot of people who are learning to be children's writers. I will explain to you the children's writers, what it encompasses. So I talked about picture books. It also is chapter books, early readers, middle grade books and young adults. So it's quite a span that we encompass as far as writing. Because it's a global organization, if you join SCBWI and we have the wonder of the internet now, you would have access to Zoom meetings anywhere in the world that are being offered through SCBWI. So a lot of those meetings are free. You don't have to pay for them. You get to listen to editors, agents, authors. You might have the chance to submit to those editors and agents after you have attended that conference or that webinar or that Zoom meeting. It's really a wonderful opportunity. And I think some of the best Zoom meetings I've been to have been done by uh, celebrated authors who I wouldn't normally get to see, and I get to see now, I get to see people like Tara Lazar and Pat Zietlow Miller and all kinds of wonderful children's book writers who share their craft with you and explain to you, this is how you put together an incredible middle grade novel. This is how you craft a young adult novel. This is how you make a picture book under 2000 words. And this is how you become successful. And it really is a learning process. And I know that everyone, when they first write something down, the first thing they're thinking about is how can I get published? Uh, and I granted, I understand that, but finding an agent or finding an editor and getting published is a long road sometimes. And we have we also not only have traditional publishing methods through SCBWI, but we support all of our self-published members. And we also help you to learn how to self-publish, how to market yourself. What are the best self-publishing techniques that you want to use? Uh, what works, what doesn't work? And like I said, you have the support community of people saying, don't do this, do this instead. I tried this, this didn't work. So the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators is a fabulous society. And here in Wisconsin, we have over 400 members. Uh, we 
usually have a lot of in-person programming, but obviously have not for quite a while. And a lot of our in-person programming was free where we had cafe meets and uh, library meets and we would have either an editor, an agent, or maybe an author come and speak. So now we're doing things Zoom and I'm excited to say that our next event coming up is in tandem with Right On Door County. Our next big in-person event is October 16th. Right On Door County will be having their conference the two days before and on the 16th, the Sunday after all of their events, we will be having an editor from HarperCollins come and speak at Stone Harbor Resort for a luncheon. So anyone can come. It will be, obviously we have to charge because we're bringing in a big editor, but uh, you, if you're a member or not a member, you can come to the luncheon. And uh, I highly encourage people to come and listen to an editor speak. We have a lot, being a member of SEBWI, we have a website that gives you information that you would not get anywhere else. We have a book that includes editors, agents, how to do a query letter, how to put together um, a proposal, uh, who you need to speak with as far as getting your novel just right. One of the free things we have after you become a member here in Wisconsin is a critique group coordinator. And Vicki spoke a little bit about uh, critique groups and critiquing. And we have a coordinator who puts together people in their same genre. So if you write picture books, you would be put together with people in picture books. If you write middle grade, you'd be put together with those people. And you can either do in person, which nobody's been doing, but most people have been doing online and you can do it weekly, monthly, however your group wants to meet. And this way you get to improve yourself and you kind of have deadlines too, which is the great thing. Like I know every Monday, if I'm not, if I don't have to have a, a story out there, I'm gonna be, be critiquing someone else's story. And that is my kind of motivation to know that I need to get going because in two more weeks, it's gonna be my turn and I have to have my story ready for the group to critique. So it's, it really is a wonderful organization. It's not a lot to join for a whole year. Uh, it's $95 when you originally join. And then after that, it's $80 every single year. When you join SCBWI, your joining date is your date. So it goes from year to year from whatever that date is. So you're always getting a full 12 months for your membership, which is wonderful. And I am available to talk to anybody who is interested uh, in SCBWI. And like I said, we have a lot of programs that you do not have to be a member for. If you go to our website, you can, you can go and watch our webinars and be a part of some of our Zoom meetings and you do not have to be a member. Um, and some of it is just a nominal fee, $10, $15, not, not that much. Uh, my organization website is scbwi.org, which is right under after my name. And uh, uh, you can go to that. And once you get to that website, that's our huge HQ website. You would then have to click on regional uh, uh, SCBWI areas, and then you find Wisconsin and just click on Wisconsin and you'd get to me. So uh, I will put in my actual email address. And if anyone wants to email me, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you, Deb. Now, Christina. I, I, I was a little worried before because I wasn't quite prepared, Jared. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I hope that'll work. Not that it's all that exciting, but hello, everyone. Um, can you see my, my slide okay? Wonderful. Yeah. So hello, I'm Christina Kavasta, and I am the Vice President of Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets. Um, and so I've just, not that it's all that exciting, but I've just listed a few things here, mostly so I don't forget to mention anything. 
Um, so you will see our mission statement up there for the Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets. We are a statewide organization and it's no surprise we are focused on poetry. So if you are a poet or a poetry person, um, you know, I, I'm looking at you. Um, so our mission is to really celebrate poetry across the state. Um, and we try to have a variety of opportunities to do so. Um, we are a membership organization and we really try to emphasize fellowship. Um, the first, I think it was the first conference I went to, um, I went because I really wanted to see this fabulous poet um, who was at the conference. And one of the first people I met there who has now become a, a really wonderful friend of mine and a really wonderful poet friend of mine, um, you know, sort of saw me hanging back in the, um, in the rather large room of people who were then complete strangers to me. Um, and she just sort of took me aside and said, I come for the fellowship. And I know you don't know anyone yet, but I hope you keep coming back for the fellowship and sort of introduced herself. And, and I did, and I kept coming back and I have, um, you know, met wonderful people and where else can I spend, you know, time talking to other people who are poetry people like me, where we understand each other and we can just have those great conversations. So um, I think fellowship is really key to our organization. And so what we try to do is um, have a variety of different kinds of programming, a variety of different kinds of um, projects and things where we can meet each other, uh, work together, um, work towards things um, that all sort of circle around our love of poetry, but also writing poetry um, and sort of working towards those goals. So, the state of Wisconsin is divided up, you know, we have a poetry map of about seven regions and there's a, a regional coordinator, a regional VP for each area. Um, and in some cases we share those duties, there's co-VPs. And um, they sort of work to keep us connected within those areas. Um, and they, the VPs do that in lots of different ways. Um, they, they sometimes help coordinate workshop groups or critique groups. Um, they keep us connected by informing us about, you know, wonderful events going on, whether they organize them or not, um, you know, happenings going on um, in the area, whether they be, you know, readings in coffee shops, when we used to do that, and hopefully we'll be doing that again soon, um, Zoom events, you know, people coming to, you know, schools or, you know, um, other organizations, public art organizations, that sort of thing. So the VPs work to keep us connected. Um, and then the state organization also works to have things going on. And so what I've got listed here are some of the things that the, that the state organization does. As soon as I'm done talking, I'll pop a bunch of links in the chat. But um, for a long time, one of our um, ongoing projects has been the Wisconsin Poets Calendar. Um, and, you know, depending on how our little pictures are displaying on your screen. You'll see in the upper right-hand corner of the slide, our most recent poet's calendar um, cover image. Um, and so the poet's calendar um, each time features original artwork usually on the cover. Um, and so if you're looking for a way to um, organize your year like a planner um, that keeps you organized but also has poetry every day, that's something that um, the WFOP does every year. Um, we're and we accept um, submissions for it from, you know, poets across the state. You don't have to be a member to submit. Um, often those poems sort of align with, not always, but obviously we're going to have snowy poems in winter and things like that. But that's something we publish every year. And you don't have to be a member to submit. Um, you can order those on our website, but we also sell them at a number of um, small bookstores and that sort of thing. So you can find a list of those bookstores on our website and you can support local bookstores. So it's a win, 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 you know, keep yourself organized, read poetry, support local bookstores. Who doesn't want to do that, right? Um, another thing that we started, um, I think in just 2016 or 2017, and I'm, I was the founding editor and I'm the managing editor is Bramble is a literary magazine. Um, we publish both online um, and in print. I'll pop that link in the chat as well. And in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll find a cover image for Bramble. I think that was our summer um, 21 issue. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of Bramble. Um, we publish poetry in there. 
Um, we usually publish a couple essays and then we feature original cover artwork as well from Wisconsin or Wisconsin aligned artists. I love our covers. I think they're beautiful. Um, this cover was uh, Rosie Petrie is the artist. Um, and I think that that's the issue that was guest edited by um, our former poet laureate, Margaret Rosga. Um, Ramble has a different guest editor for each issue. We put out three issues a year, and this really connects with the idea of fellowship as well. So we choose a different guest editor each time. Um, they're, they're often members of WFOP or aligned in some way. Um, and the idea is that it really represents sort of the fullness of um, Wisconsin poetry and Wisconsin poets. So we have different aesthetics each time, um, as opposed to just us, you know, we, there's just so many voices. Um, we have so many things to say. Um, and so Bramble's a wonderful publication to check out as well. You can read all the poems online. You can look at the essays. Sometimes we have web extras of things that we can only do on the web or art extras. Um, and so that's really a wonderful thing to check out too. We have annual contests. Um, the Muse and Triad, we also have a chapbook contest, a student uh, contest as well. Those links are all on our webpage as well. Um, we do uh, normally pre-COVID a couple of uh, conferences every year um, in spring and fall. Um, our next conference, fingers crossed, we've got it planned for spring and we're really excited about it because it's been a couple of years. Um, That'll be April 29th and 30th. And we're so excited to maybe see each other in person, um, whoever feels comfortable going. Um, our keynote for that is gonna be um, our current poet laureate, Dasha Kelly Hamilton, who I know is coming to Door County pretty soon too, right, Jared, for the student? Yeah, um, she's wonderful. Um, and our theme is getting the word out. Um, but past conferences um, have been, we've had uh, poets Mark Doty, um, T.C. Tolbert, Tiana Clark, um, the conferences, again, you know, fellowship, seeing each other, you know, talking for two and a half days about nothing but poetry um, is pretty wonderful. And then I think as a few other people have alluded to, um, we've all learned a lot during the pandemic. And one of the maybe surprising things have been that this kind of programming where we're able to meet virtually has meant that we may be able to make connections we wouldn't have been able to make if everything had to be face-to-face. -face. So Vicki, Deb, I can see you on my little mini minimized screen. I don't know if we would have met if we didn't have this opportunity. Um, and so one of the things we started um, is some programming that's called Poetry at Large, um, which is online programming that we're continuing um, even when we're able to gather face to face. Um, and we've realized that this is wonderful for accessibility for so many reasons. Um, you know, being able to have people visit and meet and talk about poetry and listen in our homes um, and not be bound by, you know, if you can get there physically. Um, so um, this Poetry at Large, again, it's on our website and I'll pop all those links in the chat. Our two-part series, they usually consist of a workshop, or I'm sorry, a reading and then a workshop um, with different poets on different topics. So we're right in the middle of one right now with Angela Voris Hills called Poetry of Transition. She's already done the work, the reading, and then the workshop is coming up. So we're coming up on part two. But our next one is in June, um, and it'll be on the Villanelle. Um, and we're just really, really excited about that. Um, so we're going to you know, continue with this programming that we've had, build on that, add in the new things that we've been learning. Um, and we would love if you would um, you know, check us out, check our programming out. If you have any questions, we're happy to you know, answer those. Um, and we'd love to get to know more people who would like to sort of engage in this fellowship and this project with us. Hey, thank you, Christina. Barry? Well, hey, folks. Uh, how's it going? It's, uh, it's, it's one of those dark February days and nights, and here we are, and we're on the Zoom and, and all that. So, um, you know, one thing, um, when uh, um, 
Vicky was talking about uh, uh, open mics that they they started doing during you know what. Um, we did the same thing, and you know, cast your mind back to early early April of 2020, and we had just had to cancel this or that, and you know, it was just a bummer. And we had our first open mic and uh, on zoom and it was a little shaky but it all worked and we had like 50 folks showed up and i was amazed and people we had um you know we had time for maybe 10 or 11 readers and it was all great and the thing is it was it was so good for the soul after you know as people are reading and everybody's supportive and it's good stuff um everybody just felt better because uh they had sat in on you know writers doing their thing so that is a marvelous thing and that's kind of what you know all of us do we're 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 a a, a place for uh uh writers to get their stuff out to improve their craft and and everything like that and that at the bottom at the end of the day it's it's uh good for the soul so okay enough about that i got it I'm going to read you just a little paragraph. Okay, this is what we do. Uh, Wisconsin Writers Association, founded 1948. My gosh, that's a long time ago. Um, and we were actually originally um, named the Wisconsin Regional Writers Association. And, um, but we are a vibrant creative community, community dedicated to the support of writers and authors no matter where they are. Um, WWA sponsors and hosts year-round workshops, events throughout Wisconsin, offering exclusive resources and discounts to more than 500 members. And WWA shares its knowledge base and provides members the means to develop their craft, discover resources, expand their networks, and build their audiences. And that's, you know, we all do that. I mean, that's what these associations do and uh, um, expanding networks. That's, that's a big thing. And even with Zoom, you can do it. I mean, we're doing it right now. Uh, you know, you used to have to drive, you know, down the interstate, go to some hotel or, you know, drive three hours and oh my gosh, I think we're getting a little spoiled um, that we don't have to do it, but still, wasn't it, it was fun. It was great. I mean, you know, standing in the hall with a cup of coffee and meeting somebody, talking to somebody about this or that, and, you know, so, you know, that will come back. It is coming back. And, uh, um, you know, our, our group is, um, it's a very diverse and, and um, for all levels of talent, I mean, which is, goes with our founder, who is a UW professor named Robert Gard, and um, he founded this outfit. And being a um, Wisconsin idea guy, he was all about you know, democracy and, and improving um, social programs and, and getting uh, writers to write their stuff, no matter where the heck they are, if they're farmers or, or uh, um, you know, mechanics, you know, he had a, that kind of vision. And so he, he founded it and was president for a while, and he stuck around supporting the outfit of, up through the early 80s. So he was engaged, and that's kind of built into our, our DNA. And um, so as part of that, you know, we're a um, membership-based organization, a nominal sum to join. Hey, it's 35 bucks. Whoa. Um, and... Uh, um, you get discounts and newsletters and connections, and you get a Wisconsin People and Ideas magazine uh, subscription. It shows up in your mailbox, actual U.S. mail, delivered by an agent of the federal government. How about that? And um, um, free book reviews, all kinds of stuff like that. And our, our events are uh, the uh, kind of the mainstay. And oh, what, what's that? There it is. Yeah. It's a great magazine, isn't it great? And um, um, oh, members also do get a, a discount on the, um, the classes that the Academy puts on. And they got uh, a bunch coming up uh, in the next couple of months. And so, you know, WWA members get 10% off. Hey, it's a good deal. 
And uh, so we're pushing that. Um, but we have events. We had one in January. We're having one uh, Saturday on historical nonfiction. Um, open another open mic early March. Then a flash fiction in in uh, April. Then uh, poetry in May. And uh, um, I'm going to be out at, in May at the Shake Rag Alley Center for the Arts. We're going to be announcing kind of we already have, but talking more about the. Uh, New Wisconsin Writers Association Press. It's uh, an actual uh, traditional publisher focused on Wisconsin writers, Wisconsin scenes, Wisconsin stories, that kind of stuff. And uh, we can talk more about that if you'd like. But uh, um, then in June, we have a screenplay thing coming up. And open mics will be happening about once a month, every six weeks or so. Um, and um, um, then here's save the date. Working with our good friends up way up north, Lake Superior Writers uh, and the St. Croix Writers, we have an in person, uh, we're planning a two day in person conference in Superior, and uh, it's, it's going to be great. And it's like, it's the first one that we're going to have a big one and it's going to be in on a great location, a lot of cool speakers and some agents and all that kind of stuff that we always like and working with, uh, uh, with uh, the Lake Superior Writers folks, uh, partnering with them, putting that thing on. So there's a lot of great writers up there, I tell you. And I, you know, with our kind of organization, we're, you know, across the state. So, you know, it's, wherever you have, if you have one big conference a year, it's always in the wrong place. You know, if it's down in Milwaukee, oh geez. If it's way up in Eau Claire, oh geez. I mean, it's, you, you can't win. And so the Zoom era has been great, but, uh, um, but still we, we do have members all over the state and uh, it's, it's a good thing. Um, also, uh, hey, um, on March 1st, the Jade Ring contest uh, opens. That's the, uh, the uh, uh, annual thing. It's been going on for 73 years. Holy smoke. And um, it's, uh, it's an institution. And the winners um, get a writing, free writing retreat at Shake Rag Alley out there in uh, Mineral Point. And um, uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm going out there in May. But, uh, uh, so submit your stuff. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing. And, uh, we'll be announcing all the details, uh, momentarily. So, uh, uh, if you're that sort of writer, this is, here it comes again, uh, March 1st through June 5th. That's the deadline. Um, then let's see what else we got. Um, the, uh, um, you know, one of our, our, our things that has been new in the last three or four years is that we have, the association has the, the wherewithal, the resources to help other organizations. And we have uh, sponsored uh, events and, and uh, uh, all sorts of things for the last two or three years. And um, uh, for instance, I could rattle them off, um, but uh, uh, Lakefly, the Writers' Conference, Chippewa Valley, I mean, BJ, uh, you know, that's one of the things we're helping support the Priory. And um, um, Driftless, the Novel in Progress uh, book camp, even the Chicago Writers Association, you know, down in our neck of the woods, there are a lot of folks who are cross membership. I mean, it goes both ways. And so we're helping uh, their in-person outfit or a conference coming up next month. And, um, and we're happy, we're very happy to, to work with uh, Lake Superior Writers. I'm telling you, it's, it's a good thing. And, uh, um, but uh, uh, the next big thing, as I mentioned, is the press. And we are, uh, it is a traditional uh, royalty paying uh, publisher. Uh, we're looking for um, um, fiction, uh, memoir, stories, whatever, uh, whatever's out there, Wisconsin-based, and uh, um, accepting submissions, 
the first um, book is going to come out in uh, this fall. And uh, uh, so we've got a little stack of, uh, of manuscripts we're going through and then next year they'll be coming out and it's gonna be a real thing. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, um, I think it's, it's something that used to happen a million years ago with the association. There's always things that happened a million years ago. We have people who know the, the, all the tribal lore and you know, there's a lot of it, in the, you know, so <clears throat> it's, it's good to know. But, uh, um, and, but we are looking to the future. We have a group of insiders and outsiders. I mean, uh, some board members and some non-board uh, members who are getting together and thinking about what are we going to do? Uh, who are we? It's, this is the Olaf. If you've seen Frozen, um, this, these are the Olaf questions. Who are we? Why are we here? Where are we going? If you have grandchildren or kids, you might know. Um, but uh, um, that's what we're, we're going through right now. In three or four years, what should we be? What, what's the, this sort of uh, outfit? Uh, what should we be doing? So looking to the future, um, mining the, the best of the past. And uh, so, yeah, that's us. Um, the website is up on the, on the, uh, the chat. Um, all the events that I rattled off, except for the superior one, are free. And uh, um, so it's, uh, it's a great organization and it's a part of the, it's kind of part of the scene around here. And uh, we are happy to be here, happy to do what we can to help other outfits and support writers wherever they are. So that's us. Thanks. Great, thank you, Barry. Jenny? Hey, yeah. Um, so it's wonderful to be here with all of you. Um, I have admired you all from afar, um, but have not seen many of your faces yet. Um, what's really funny is that I went to graduate school with BJ Holler. So we're old school friends from Alabama. And it's just amazing to see every all the, all the good work that BJ has done here. Um, so I'm Jenny Groff. I'm one of the executive directors of Woodland Pattern Book Center, along with my partner, Laura Solomon. And um, we have been here for almost four years, two of them during a pandemic, which has been a very interesting thing to go through. Um, I feel like um, most of you probably know what Woodland Pattern is, but in case you don't, um, this is an institution in Milwaukee that supports the literary and other arts. Uh, we have improvisational music that we bring in and also lots of cinema and a lot of visual art. Uh, we also have a book center inside uh, that has 25,000 small press titles and we never get rid of anything. We have one of the largest collections of Wisconsin writers. Um, I would argue that it is the largest collection of Wisconsin writers for sale um, in the state and in the world. So um, if you are looking to, to put your book somewhere or your self-published book, it doesn't matter where it comes from. We are here for Wisconsin writers in that way. Um, and we've been operating out of Milwaukee since 1979, so 40 years. Um, Anne Kingsbury and Carl Garton founded this place a long time ago. Uh, and it has just been a cultural institution that I learned about all the way from Georgia. Um, and my partner, Laura, learned about it separately from me. And uh, when the job came open, when Ann and Carl were going to retire, we uh, were like, well, you should apply. No, you should apply. And we're like, wait, we're a couple. We should just apply together, <laughs> carry on the tradition. So that's uh, what we've done here. And it has been a absolutely wonderful thing to get to know all of the writers and all of the strong community that is here for literature in Wisconsin. Um, we serve everybody for a lifetime practice from young youth in like second grade all the way up through people um, in their 90s. And it's, it's uh, an incredible center that manages to do all of that. We work with Milwaukee Public Schools. Um, we act as a bridge between local and national communities of poets and artists. Um, we work closely with many national groups, the Poetry Coalition, uh, which is about 25, maybe now it's larger than that, um, organizations from all over the country uh, who are supporting poets, poetry, the literary arts, 
uh, and we have different initiatives that, that help strengthen us, whether it's grants or, or programming, et cetera. Um, we're also working closely with the Indigenous Nations Poets, which is the first ever uh, initiative that will support up and coming and established native writers from all states. Uh, we are the fiscal receiver for them and as well as for the Wisconsin Center for the Book. So we're doing a lot of good work, we feel right here. Um, and so you should go to woodlandpattern.org. I'll put all this in the chat afterwards if there's a, a moment to breathe afterward. Um, but also you should look, uh, an easy way to go to our book center is um, woodlandpatternbookcenter.com, uh, which is embedded in the same website, but it's such a large store that we couldn't um, build it inside of our regular website. So that's how you get to that. Um, our website right now is not super updated with events because we just had a huge one, our poetry marathon, which is a great way to support um, writers from all over Wisconsin and the world. And we really thank you, Jared, especially and everybody for supporting the, the marathon. It's 24 hours now virtual. It never used to be that big, um, but we were able to bring in about 250 poets, artists, writers, um, the majority from Wisconsin, but again, from all over the place. And we caption the videos ourselves and put together these, these, these programs that we've live broadcast. It's an incredible event that anyone can participate in. And if you're um, unable to participate in as a fundraiser, we have people who sponsor poets. They come in from all over the place because it's just, it's a magical event and everybody should read in it. Anyway, woodlandpattern.org, you can right now go and see what we were able to do in the marathon. It doesn't matter what kind of poet you want to see, that poet is probably reading in the marathon. It's really fascinating um, to watch how many, we have youth who are reading, we have people who are coming in from, from all over the state, and, and um, it's, it's incredible. So I really encourage you to check out the marathon and to participate if you can. It's one way that we're really into supporting Wisconsin writers. We also have plenty of groups that used to meet right at Woodland Pattern. And when the pandemic began, of course, like everyone did, who's explained, we pivoted. And we have groups that range from, we have a read shop, which is led by Carl Gartheim, one of the founders. Um, and they read difficult texts, difficult poetry texts. Um, so right now they're reading through Susan Howe's The Midnight. And uh, before that, it was Nathaniel Mackey. And before that was Louis Zukovsky. And it is incredible. It's Saturdays around lunchtime. If you want to have a poetry lunch, you should come and join. Anyone can really do it. Because the thing is, is that what you do is you read the book live. Like you just sit there with everybody. It's difficult. So the point is to just be like, what are they saying here? or to stop and actually look up a single word and have a really interesting conversation about that. Um, and so I would encourage anyone who wants to read along to do that. We also have so many writing groups um, that have continued to meet virtually. The Wednesday Writers, for example, have been meeting for well over a decade. Um, it's a rotating group of about 20 people and they work in all genres. Um, and they pivoted immediately from our gallery and online space because it's an amazing community group. They need each other and they generate other people who feel the same. And that's how a lot of Woodland Pattern works. Um, but again, I would just encourage you to go to the website and check all those things out. We have um, also a lot of workshops that people can join. We try to keep them very affordable, but also we always maintain a few scholarship spots. So if somebody needs to, to join, we have a very simple application. Um, you just fill it out online. And again, that's at the website. But coming up in the spring, we have everything from haiku studied from its you know, apex, like all the way through now where they're doing haiku slams in Detroit. So we're gonna teach haiku and then um, we're going to hold our own slam. And that's going to be taught by darling Nikki Jansen 
who is a really great spoken word poet and a wonderful educator who's been a teaching artist also for us for a really long time. Um, and we're also going to have a workshop in narrative cartography with Liette Baer um, and Samia Bashir, who is a fantastic poet who's now out in Portland, will be leading a one day workshop. So just keep checking in with us for all those opportunities that can be available to you uh, through the community. Um, we have a couple of really large events coming up that I'll mention really quickly and then I'll stop. Um, March 13th uh, at 5 p.m., that's a Sunday, we're going to be partnering, partnering with um, Lambda Literary uh, to work with the Poetry Coalition's National Initiative on Poetry and Disability Justice. And this is gonna be a completely accessible event. So we're really pushing the envelope with this because we're bringing in um, ASL interpreters, which we, we always want to have. This is a, a chance for us to have two because we have the funding for it. And we're gonna caption the entire event. We're going to have four queer disabled poets who are gonna to get together and read. And they're also going to have a conversation afterwards. And we're going to produce a publication it's going to be made by Penny Milk Press here in Milwaukee, uh, and that will be free to anyone who attends the online event. We'll mail it to you. Um, so please join us for that. And then March 25th through 27th, we're having a huge weekend here in Milwaukee that will also be hybrid. It will be a Jewish literary symposium, which is going to be a really amazing event because it's the first of its kind. It's focusing on post-Soviet Jewish immigration the United States, um, and also on Jewish textuality and interpretation. And we're going to host that at the Bindery in Bayview, which is a wonderful new space that I'll also pop in the chat. It's, it's, uh, you can do a lot of things there. Uh, but again, I won't take up too much of your time. But check out these events and join us and, and mail your books to us. Join us virtually. Join us in person when we can. We're always doing hybrid things. And we really like working with people from around the state. We're always trying to collaborate. It's been, it's a joy of ours, truly. Um, and it's fantastic to be in the room with all of you tonight. And I appreciate you very much. So thank you. Thank you, Jenny. You know, it's, it's so wonderful to be in this room with organizations that have been around for such a long time, as well as newer organizations, which right on is, is, under 10 years old. So I think we, we still qualify as young and new. So we started in 2013, kind of unofficially, we got our nonprofit status in 2014. And we're both a nonprofit writing center and a writer's residency program. So we offer residencies to writers um, from emerging to established writers in any genre anywhere from one week to a month. And writers can come and just spend a week to a month focusing on whatever their current creative project is and just have that time and space dedicated to doing nothing else than being a writer. Other than the application fee, we don't charge for the residency, but we ask that people do some kind of community service project for us in exchange, which is how we manage to do most of our workshops and programming. And the 2014, April of 2014, we welcomed our first resident. We had 12 residents that year. Uh, this year we have 62 scheduled. So it's been a really, um, really wonderful program. Christina has been in residence there. And it's it's just wonderful. We we at first were just getting people from the upper Midwest, but we are now receiving applications from writers from California and Oregon, Washington State. We've had two international residents come so far and two more slated for this year. So it's a really exciting program and we're we're really happy to be able to support writers in that way of giving them that time and space to focus on their craft. Um, one of the things, in addition to offering a short-term residency, one of the things that is also a little bit unique about our residency program is that we do welcome writers who are who have children who need to come with them. So we have had 
a number of parent writers who have come with their children. And what's been like really amazing is that sometimes the children are writers themselves. So the kids and the parents go off into their little nooks and they spend all day writing and then they come together at the dinner table and they share what they wrote that day, which like as a 12 year old, I could not imagine ever having done that with my parents, but it's it's really exciting that um, that that people are doing this. And we offer a variety of programs and workshops, readings, critique groups, uh, book clubs, both online and in person for all ages, all stages. With our residency program, we're able to take programming, well, pre-pandemic, take programming into the schools, into assisted living facilities, into the county jail, the medical center, the boys and girls club. And we're, we're really looking forward to be able to getting back to offer that kind of community-based program in addition to our classes and workshops. Like so we do um, have a number of workshops and classes that are online that even post-pandemic will continue because it's just allowed us to reach people who would never otherwise be able to come to our programming. So we're not only um, are we, you know, hope that people will join as participants, but if anyone is looking for a teaching opportunity, I'm always on the lookout for people who are willing to teach an online class for us. So, you know, um, feel free to contact me if you would like to do that. Um, it was mentioned that Dasha Kelly Hamilton, our poet laureate is coming. We have a Young Writers Conference coming up March 18th and 19th. And that is for middle school and high school students. It's a great day and a half of programming with Dasha as one of our keynotes, as well as songwriter Kathy Greer and uh, children's author John Coy, who's coming from the Twin Cities, who's a great author of children's picture books, middle grade and YA. And he just gets kids so excited about writing. And we have a number of scholarships available for that program. So if you know of young kids who would benefit for, from that program, we'd love to, love to have them join us. We also have um, a conference that I, that I wanted to point out based on some of the things that especially Jenny was saying. It's in May, May 13th, 14th, and 15th, our Health and Healing Conference, which is we have two different tracks geared for people who are kind of serious about writing and want to tackle issues about writing about grief and trauma, writing about illness, writing about other aspects of well being, and also a track for people who um, we know would benefit from writing about these experiences, but are just terrified of writing or just feel so intimidated by it. So we have a number of workshops that are meant to be very welcoming and encouraging for people who don't think of themselves as writers, because we've we found that to be one of the, the great barriers to our program is people, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's really interesting what your center is doing, but I'm not a writer, so I would never come there. And we believe that everyone is, can be a writer and everyone has a story to tell. And to that end, we um, started a year long mentoring program last month with a group of 12 women out of a pool of about 40 applications of women who wanted to write but would never take the, take the step of registering for one of our classes, um, whether that was you know, because of the cost of the program or because childcare was an issue or whatever the factors might have been. So we, we received a grant to help with issues like childcare um, and providing free classes for them outside of the, the mentoring sessions that they'll be doing. But what we have found is that the greatest barrier that people have is psychological, whether it's something that they learned in high school or like some of these women were saying in our first session that, you know, they shared something that they wrote with a friend or with someone that they trusted. And the person's response was, well, why would you write about that? You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. You should, you know, put that away. So 
there are a lot of psychological barriers for people to, to engage in writing that we want to help them overcome. So we hope that we, um, we are able to do that. And I know we are, we are running long on time. So just want to um, say that if you are in Door County and you want to come visit us, we would we would love to have you in. And even if our center isn't open, we have a uh, half mile hike and right trail. So if that's open anytime, whether our center is open or not, we have a little kiosk with booklets that will give you prompts to consider as you go along the trail. And you can do that alone, or you can do that with a family or get a group of friends together and do that. And it's really been a lot of fun. So I know that we have been getting um, some questions in the chat, but it also seems that they have um, been answered in the chat as well. But if you do have any new questions or anything has come up, you can either put that in the chat or Morgan, since we are a small group, could people unmute and ask questions? Yes, I will give everyone the ability to unmute and start your video if you wish. And the room falls silent. <laughs> <laughs> so Erin, I wanted to say to something you had said about like that, those events with five people, because prior to coming to Write On, I was the program director at the Loft Literary Center in Minneapolis. I was oh. there for 19 years and you would put a lot of energy into doing a program that maybe only five people would come. And it seemed like disappointing as the administrator, but I found that some of those programs were the best ones we did because the kind of conversation that happened couldn't have happened with 50 people in the room. So there's, a, there's always a plus side. The, the people who are doing the audience counting and the funders, they're not so thrilled about it, but the, the experience <laughs> is great. And I was going to say too, as uh, people may come up with questions, uh, I meant to mention that uh, BJ Hollers, our director, is yeah, he's one of these just totally inexplicable humans whose energy and kindness can't be explained um, in normal human terms uh, for anyone who hasn't met him. But apparently, everyone's met him, so uh, it, it's okay that I failed to bring that up. So. <laughs> I just wanted to point out in the chat, I saw a couple of really great comments. And one was as someone with a disability or in the disability community, I'm grateful for being welcomed in as a writer. So I think that's a wonderful comment. And um, someone else just posted this comment. The information provided was terrific, very informative. So thank you all. Thank you all so much for being with us. If there, if there are no, no questions, we'll say good night, but thank you panelists so much for your time and the information. Morgan, as always, thank you for making it go so well. We appreciate all that you've done for the Door County Reads program. And thank you everyone for joining us. So coming up, thank watch doorcountyreads.org, we have a, Rogue Theater performing uh, Population 485 tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., both in person and virtually. So you can watch it on Rogue Theater's Facebook page, and you can find the details at uh, doorcountyreads.org. And on Saturday, we have our University of Wisconsin Green Bay panel speaking about things like hope and faith about Michael Perry and his work. That's going to be at 1030 in the morning. And then, oh yeah, 10.30, <laughs> sorry boys, I'm 10 or 10.30 in my brain. And we are also going to be having the Griffin String Quartet performing at 2 p.m. Both of those are virtual. And our final book discussion is going to be on Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, discussing Wisconsin authors. So you can join us virtually. And again, doorcountyreads.org. And if you haven't heard the Griffin String Quartet perform, um, they're amazing. They're wonderful. So if you're able to tune into that at 2 p.m. Saturday, do it. Oh, thank you all so much. Hi, thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has thank been you wonderful. Oh.